All right, I'm finally not working. We finally have time to get back on the Daytona and continue along with the motor rebuild. Let's get to it. Back from Northern Tool for a ring compressor and I did what every man does in Northern Tool and or Harbor Freight and I spent way too much money. I needed all this stuff, I guess. I just can't walk by stuff. Anyway, we did get the ring compressor. Uh, if you guys remember, it's been a few months since I filmed one of these videos on this car. I don't even think you've seen the new subframe. Uh, I got that from Steven Seal at Turbo Dodge Parts. So we're gonna cut the old one out, swap A-arms over. That's a little bit further down the road though. Uh, for now, we got piston rings. Uh, I think in the last video I said pistons and not rings. So, uh, sorry, I meant rings. Uh, I've got, let's see what we got for a uh, magnet. I got some main bearings, which I don't think I'm gonna end up using because uh, we're not pulling the motor, but I got them just in case they're bad once we get in there. So I got a set of rod bearings, which we will be using in the rebuild. Um, let's see what we got here for the old Rock Auto. Uh, second gen Camaro. All right, you can get down with that. On the toolbox she goes. I also got a uh, cylinder hone. I uh, got the correct one for these cylinders. So the plan is we're going to drop the oil, drop the oil pan off, throw some uh, piston rings and rod bearings in it. Lighting's not the best because uh, got the garage door closed. As our boy Derek at Vice Grip Garage would say, it's hotter than Shania Twain in the 90s today. So let's see how bad this oil looks. Pretty fresh, but she's got a lot of fuel in it. That was probably from, if you guys remember, that huge injector that was in this thing. It had on cylinder number th three, I think, had this huge injector. So that is probably why she's right full of fuel. Still got some lubricity, but not the best. Oh boy, finger tight. Interesting. Oh my, all of them. Wow, yeah, every one of these, finger tight. Sweet. God, you wonder what else is wrong with this old car. Good thing we're going through it. This is why I never will ever drive a car that I bought used until I go through it, because you just don't know. What kind of idiot has been in there in the past? I've been watching uh, Vice Grip's Power Tour videos, man. I'm getting so fired up. My brother and I are doing that. Oh, wow. Finger tight. Jeez. My brother and I are doing that uh, next summer. We're supposed to do it this summer, but life got in the way. The car is not done, which isn't the end of the world. I already have an alternate plan. If I can't take this thing, I'm going to take my second gen. But it would be way more fun to bring this because, you know, the whole breakdowns. And I don't know. It's just part of the experience. That second gen um, will, would easily just make the trip. I mean, no, nothing would go wrong with that thing. I've already been all through it. It's very reliable. This thing, of course, we're going through it, but she's never going to be reliable. All right. Yeah, this inspection cover is going to have to come off. It might only be three bolts. These two big 18 millimeter guys, and then this guy, I think that will get it off. So I got tired of fighting this thing, and I just loosened up the front motor mount the rest of the way and the bracket back here the rest of the way. And now she pulled that out. Imagine that. I made that way harder on myself than I needed to. Note to self or anyone working on Dodge Daytona, loosen the motor mounts. Oh, yeah. You'll thank yourself. What are we stuck on? Coolant hose? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there we have it. 
All right, let's take a look. Looks pretty, pretty good. A um, little bit of sludge here in the back. Pretty caked on, but uh, overall pretty good. The top end of this motor is extremely clean. Um, bottom end, as you can see, a little bit of sludge, but not bad. Pickup screen is clean. That's beautiful. All right, time to start pulling pistons. We'll start with, I think that's cylinder number four, driver's side, because if you turn the motor, yeah, that's probably, probably cylinder number four. I'm not 100% certain, because I this is the first front wheel drive vehicle I've ever really worked on. So let's uh, loosen this baby up and get this piston out of here and probably pull this dipstick as well. Let's get that kind of out of the way. There. Oh my! That should not be that tight. God, who worked on this damn car? Boy. Oh my word. Wonder what the torque rating on this is. Let's mark the front of this cap here. There we go. Broken ring. <laughs> Damn good thing I did this. Wow. Okay. Well, good thing we're doing rings. Interesting. Got the rings off of here. You can see all the blow by we were running into because of that broken ring. Look at all that. Hmm. Now me and the mad scientists got to rip apart the block and replace the piston rings you fried. Now me and the mad scientist got to rip apart the block and replace the piston rings you fry. We're just going to let her soak in the old carb cleaner for a little bit. Oh yeah, that's going to be nice. Beautiful. Cool. Back under here. Crankshaft looks great. I just pulled the rod bearing off. Looks good. The, the rod bearing, on the other hand, pretty worn out. You can definitely feel that, the grooves in it. Man, it's a good thing we did this. I just, one of the things I hope you guys take away from this channel is that you don't have to be a super professional engine builder. Real quick pro tip here, make sure your dot is facing up. See if that'll focus, yep. Make sure that dot always faces up. And your rings are different. Your number two ring on this particular car is thinner than your number one compression ring. Um, but in any case, man, don't get yourself too spun out over what professional builders tell you is the case. Because then you'll think you have to be a professional and you'll get all worked up over what you don't know and Man, it's okay to not be perfect. It's okay to not have perfect equipment. I mean, this, this piston's got some wear on it, right? It's not gonna be perfect. We're not drag racing this thing. It is not a 1,000 horsepower motor. Um, if you get spun out about all the advice that these engine builders give, and, I'm not, and I'm, it's great advice, but it's not necessary on an everyday backyard, several hundred dollar rebuild like this one, so. Just my two cents. Because if you get too spun out, then you'll never work on your car because you'd be afraid to. That is significantly in better shape than what came out of it. What a difference. We are gonna get some carb cleaner on this bad boy. Even though it's a brand new part, you never wanna trust that they're totally clean. 
take it out of the package. All right, so our piston is re-rung. We have our main bearing or our rod bearings installed. They're clean, they're nice. We are gonna put some assembly lube on them. I'm gonna wait though, because I think what we're gonna do first is hone the cylinder. All right, I've never actually done uh, cylinder honing with the engine still in the vehicle. Um, I don't see why it can't be done though. So what I've done is I've rotated the engine so that this cylinder's bottom dead center. And then I have taken a shop rag and put it up in here to protect the uh, crankshaft so that we don't get the little metal shavings and stuff falling down on this. So this is the way we're gonna do it. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna clean up afterwards um, anything that possibly could have fallen down, but we should be fine. So we're gonna uh, stick a ball hone down it and see how the cylinder cleans up. This cylinder actually doesn't have too bad of a ring ridge. You really can't even feel it, which I'm kind of surprised with. I'll give you a little bit of before and after action here. Here's our cylinder before, and uh, we'll take and run a hone down through it. What I do is we're gonna clean up our inside of our cylinder here as good as we can. And then we're gonna take some motor oil. Of course, it's super tech. Why? I mean, why would you even think about asking that? And we will, we're gonna lube up the inside of this cylinder real nice. I'm actually gonna take some of this and lube up these balls as well. And after we give her a little wipe down, what we end up with is a beautifully cross-hatched cylinder, just like that. So we're gonna wanna clean this up and then I'm gonna get some uh, motor oil on this so that it doesn't corrode. But I'm thinking, I mean, most of our debris from the hone job would have been trapped in the oil. So as we clean the oil out, I'm not too worried about what falls on that crankshaft. We will clean it. And we do have the, the journal covered up. Well, not the journal, but um, the, the big end uh, covered up for the big end bearing. So that's what we got. So I'm just gonna follow what the manual says about the ring gaps, number, front of the engine, number one ring gap here, number two here, along with the expander, which is this little, guy in the oil ring in the middle um, and then upper rail and lower rail they want your gas spaced like so I don't know some people are gonna get mad in the comments about this I'm not totally convinced it really matters I mean I do think that your number one ring and your number two should be 180 degrees of each other I believe in that in that to lessen your compression loss but I mean honestly if that gap is here and that gap is here and you know what I mean? As long as they're not lined up together, I think that's all that matters, but we're gonna follow the manual. A um, little tip I like to do too, before I forget to mention it is, and be sure always to put assembly lube on your rod bearings, but I like to put a little piece of fuel hose on the end of your um, studs there, just to, as you're lowering it down so it doesn't nick the crankshaft. Just something I've always been taught. Does it really matter? I don't know if that thing's really gonna damage the crankshaft, but. Just one of those little things that makes me feel comfortable. All right, so we got our rings all clocked in at their recommended intervals. This ring compressor is pretty cheap. We'll see if it works. It did. I'll be damned. All right. Well, that exceeded what I thought it was gonna do. You could probably just use motor oil for this, but this assembly lube just sticks on there better. And I don't know when this thing, it could be months before it started. So this stuff kind of stays in place better. Alrighty, reassembling here. Um, I marked the front of this, so I remembered which way it went, but if, even if you don't mark it, 
as long as the bearing, I think they're called bearing tangs, the little cutouts in the rod bearing, as long as they're on the same side, you're good. So you really don't have to mark it. I just, I just do, I don't know. All right, so these are snugged, they're not torqued yet. I'm gonna go through and do every one of these. Um, and then I'm just gonna torque them all at the end instead of just doing one at a time. Um, always snug them down at the same time. Right, so we're snug now. I'm gonna rotate this engine a couple times just to make sure that uh, everything's rotating good and the uh, nothing's wrong with the bearing here. Rotate it, rotate it. All right, one of these things is not like the others. Um, it does have a slight tight spot when all four pistons get in line. It gets slightly tight there for a second, almost like when that swing is happening, because when these two are coming back up and these two are going back down, or vice versa, it gets a slight tight spot. That may be normal in a four-cylinder. I, I don't work on a ton of four. In fact, I've never worked on a four-cylinder. So comment down below if that is a normal thing. I and mean, we're talking slightly tight. Um, still extremely smooth, just tightens up. I'm thinking that's probably normal, because as those two cross each other, um, that crank is is then all the weights getting shifted, you know, two up, two down. So it must be that kind of throw point is what I'm thinking. Now we're gonna see if that tight spot's still there once I do the rest of the cylinders because we get little ring ridge action and stuff too we're gonna get rid of. Uh, this cylinder actually had the least ring ridge, which is probably because it has a broken piston ring. Um, but so far it rotates really smooth. I'm gonna do the rest of these three off camera. I will just chime in if I come across any other broken rings or any surprises I'll throw them on camera, but you already saw me do one. It's just gonna be a repeat process for the other three and we'll catch back up after. Cylinder two rod bearings are in much better condition. They're still showing wear, but there's no grooves that you can feel. Piston, the rings are intact, a lot of carbon buildup. Looks to be in similar condition. Of course it needs to be clean, but maybe a little less side to side wear. Still on cylinder number two here. Piston's cleaning up real nice. Just wanted to show you this little trick. Uh, I usually take, either I break a ring on purpose or I take a broken ring that has already occurred, like on this car, and I take it through the, the ring gap in the piston and uh, the ring groove in the piston and I clean all the carbon out. You can see all this carbon and stuff coming out of these grooves. They do make a tool for that. Of course, I don't have it because it's uh, the Mopar garage and we do stuff the way we have to do, but piston is coming out fantastic. Currently working on cylinder number three. Just finished up cylinder number two, the piston's out. Thought this would be a good before and after, before and after the cross hatch of the cylinder. This thing really needed it. Success. All four cylinders are done. Piston rings, rod bearings, cylinder hone. The lower end rod bearings are torqued back to 40 foot pounds, which is their spec. That tight spot is still there, that slightly tight spot. We're just gonna go with, uh, it's normal. Yep. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Got a lot left to do and it just seems to keep growing. This project, man, it's like every time we work on it, I uncover five new things that I have to add to my list. None today though. I think with our budget short block rebuild, everything went as smooth as it could possibly go. Again, this is a budget build. We reuse pistons. It's not perfect. My cross hatches aren't perfect. I don't hone cylinders for a living, right? I hope that a video like this though proves to you guys that you can get out in your garage and ranch. I am not an expert engine rebuilder. I was never trained by anyone. I grew up racing dirt bikes. I've done probably 15 or 20 um, motorcycle engines. I've done a couple Chevy 350s, a Dodge 318, Dodge 360, maybe three or four V8 rebuilds. This is my first ever four cylinder rebuild. Uh, don't be intimidated guys. Don't watch those videos that have these pro builders who are building dragsters with a thousand horsepower and get freaked out. 
It's not worth it. Get out in your garage and get your wrench in. Uh, head is ready to go back on the car now. Next video, hopefully that will get accomplished. I think I need a buddy. With the turbocharger on this head, it is dang heavy. So I need to either get a cherry picker or a buddy to lift that onto the block, but we are uh, making headway to have our engine complete, ready to rock. Like I showed in the very beginning of the video, guys, I did create a Instagram for the channel. So if you wanna keep up to date with everything that's kind of going on, some behind the scenes stuff, feel free to follow that. I'll put the at here and probably a link in the, uh, in the description. For big news, channel's finally monetized. That's right. We broke a thousand subscribers. We broke 4,000 watch hours. We're finally monetized. I appreciate you guys. You're the best. Thank you for watching. Thumbs up the video. Comment down below if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next one.